Are you ready for the ride of a lifetime by getting repeatedly shot out of a giant space turret? Because I sure am. So, we got four more rings left to go, so I guess I'm gonna uh, keep uh, going from right to left and go for this one all the way over there. I'm gonna need to go... Nope, not nearly high enough. Well... We're, we've started failing, and there are probably going to be many more failures like this, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, well, not speed up and play music, but at least cut ahead to, uh, the, um, to, to, to the parts where I actually get to, to shoot myself out of the turret again. Well, not not this time, because I'm, all, I'm almost back there anyway. Okay, now... I know I gotta go much higher, so is, is that gonna be enough? Let's try this. Boom. Nope. Not even close. Wow. Holy crap, I gotta have height to get in there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try the other turret, because maybe, just maybe, just being a little bit closer is going to improve my chances of actually going through that ring. Now I know I gotta go really, really high. Maybe this will work! Yet! Yeah! Oh! Wow, once again! I, I got the ring straight in the face, but it counted! Going for the middle ring now. If I could get it in one shot, that'd be great, but fortunately, yeah, it does look like it's nearly as far away as that last one, so maybe this will be good? Yeah, and for once, I actually get to go through the ring! Next up, the lower left ring that we can see all the way in the distance over there. So, it looks like it's a bit far away, so I might have to shoot relatively high. Maybe this will be good? Yeah! Two in a row! That's cause for celebration, right? Whoops, that wasn't where I was supposed to go. Sorry about that. Now this last ring is sort of awkward because of its positioning. It's right under the platform that serves a, a, as the starting point for the gauntlet from hell. So going too high... Well, if you do that, something like this will happen and you'll completely miss the mark. Attempt number two, and now I know to not go nearly as high as I went last time. It looked kind of weird, though, because it looked like it slammed into nothing, but... Oh! Oh, yes! It actually counted! This one I thought was so far back that it wouldn't count, but fortunately... Oh, uh, what the hell was that? Well, I'm not complaining because I didn't take any damage, but um, that was weird. Really, 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 really weird. But that's okay, because it's one more star for me. And uh, the next one is going to be coin collecting. Um, and since we have uh, only 15 stars left, and this coin collecting mission is absurdly easy, uh, I'm going to take the time to uh, talk about uh, my future projects. Um, as you probably know, I have a Banjo-Tooie LP plan for sometime in the future. However, I am sad to announce that it probably won't be starting until next year. And the reason for that is very simple. I am going to need a practice run of uh, Banjo-Tooie before I get started because I haven't played it nearly as much as I did the first game. And as a result, well, of course, I, 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 need, I think I need the practice. And we all saw for this LP just how much good uh, doing a practice run did me? Uh, okay, I thought it. Well, I thought he was an enemy b -b -b bomb that wasn't moving for some reason, but turns out uh, he's a friendly one. Yeah, that's sort of what happens when you uh, don't have them like color coded like in the uh, original anymore. Uh, but yeah, the thing is that I'm gonna need to uh, do a practice run. And the other problem is that X and Y are going to be coming very, very, very soon. So um. 
I don't know, I probably am going to be able to uh, finish this Let's Play before X and Y come out, at least. And if it's not over a few days before release, then I'm going to do a huge blitz like I did with Wind Waker and upload a ton of videos at once. Um, but, um, yeah, the reason why I want to wait to do Banjo 2 is, is because, as I said before, I want to do a practice run of uh, Banjo Tooie, and I don't want to start it until I am done with this Let's Play. The reason for that is because we're talking about two games of the same genre that don't really have the same controls, and if I start the Banjo Tooie practice run now, then I might, you know, get confused at times between the controls and do things that I'm supposed to be doing in the other game, which for the practice run isn't so bad, but when I'm recording the Let's Play of this game, I don't want to end up trying to do stuff that's, uh, from, that's from Banjo and uh, not being able to do it because uh, I'm playing a Mario game. So, as a result, this is why I want to wait until uh, I uh, until this Let's Play is over and, uh, before I do my practice run. And the fact that uh, X and Y are coming out soon plays into that fact because, well, um, once X and Y are out, I'm planning on, a on taking a break from Let's Playing, even though I'm not going to get the games right away as I think I've said before. Nonetheless, I'm still planning on interrupting my LPs when that happens, and then I'll get uh, either X or Y probably a few weeks later once we know enough about the games and the Pokémon and stuff. So as a result, um, I might have to take an extended break. I will, I will be uh, taking care of the Banjo-Tooie practice run during that time as well. So all I'm saying is... Um, once X and Y are out, don't expect too many videos from me until the end of the year. Um, I'm not saying no videos at all will come out, but my upload schedule is probably going to be lightened up a lot. Um, considering that, well, I'm going to be playing, I'm going to be busy playing uh, X and Y. So that's basically all I had to say on the subject. I wanted to get you up to speed on my plans uh, all the way until the end of the year. Now, I'm going to check behind this place because I think there are a few more coins that, can, that I can grab there and I would really, really like to avoid not, uh, not going too deep uh, into... Uh, well, I would like to avoid going too deep into that gauntlet of shit where uh, the last red coin is, incidentally. Fortunately, it's uh, sort of at the beginning, so... Um, it's not nearly as bad. I guess I could also go deeper inside uh, the moon base than uh, what I did, but I know for a fact that you don't need to go uh, any further uh, into the moon base than that red coin that I grabbed there. So, uh, oh right, I, I was talking about that last red coin, but in fact I have two left. One of them is um, underneath the rocket that's... Um, well, we, uh, we caught a glimpse of it a few times in the last video. Get up there. Here's the red coin number seven. And, oh, god damn it! I hate this thing. Talk about jerkish placement. Anyway, <laughs> this red coin... Whoa! Did I go through the floor? Oh, no, I went there. I was sort of wondering if I was going to suffocate Minecraft style from, you know, going through everything. <laughs> But, uh, fortunately, I just ended up on the edge. The reason why I was sort of doubting where I was was because uh, there was there still was that shadow, but I guess it was the shadow of the star, which, well, eh, I'm sort of used to uh, having Mario be the shadow in those circumstances because the star is always right above Mario anyway. So that last red coin is not too far from here. You just have to go up a little bit. You can see these rocks over there, that's where the red coin is, so cross the road, head over to this rock, and uh, whoa, 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 no, no, no! I really didn't have the momentum that I wanted to have there. Okay, this is much better, so now that we got all the red coins, I can just take a dive straight into the area where the star is, and that's it! We are now completely done! with coin collecting in Super Mario Star Road. We only have one star left to collect in Starlight Runway, which is in the cage. 
It's a rather cryptic one if you don't know what to do, but I'll be honest here, the first time I played this hack, this was the first star I got, because the gauntlet of shit in the sky was just too much for me, and it just so happened that going this way was uh, the, the, the first star that I ran into, because this block over here, it looks awfully suspicious, and you're supposed to take it... Okay. You're supposed to take it um, next to that tube that's closest to the entrance. Well, I call it a tube because it looks like a tube that contains acid or... Well, I don't really know what it's meant to be. Maybe it's a fancy pillar or something. Maybe uh, these are actually transparent pipes where acid flows. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's kind of the, the cool thing about... Um, primitive 64-bit graphics is that it's a bit up for interpretation, though obviously not as much as uh, really, really primitive game systems like the Atari 2600 or something like that. So, uh, well, I guess this couldn't be a pipe considering it stops right there, so maybe it's just a fancy pillar or just a container of some sort. Can I get up there? Can I? Okay, here we go. So doing this, you end up in this cage right here, where the star is. And yes, this was as simple as that. As I said, beyond the first star, Starlight Runway is so easy. Now, um, where is the entrance to the last Bowser level? It's, uh, no, over there is the Bomb Battle Factory. It's all the way over there. Okay, so... You're going to need to do a bit of precise jumping, though not insanely so. Thanks, thanks for the free lift, Shy Guy. Over here, you need 80 stars to enter, and if you do, you can enter the final Bowser level. Bowser's Rainbow Rumble! This is not that difficult, though there is there's one part that's sort of a pain in the ass, but uh, probably gonna get into that in the next video because there is a star that is, well there are two stars in this place, one for defeating Bowser and there's also another random star that's uh, hidden in the level much like in the first two Bowser levels. So here we have uh, this, uh, su this uh, suction floor spiral that uh, gets uh, more and more steep uh, the more you uh, you go through it, but don't worry. Even if you go all the way to the end, you're still going to be able to walk just fine because, well, these are suction floors. They're programmed that way. Now here, there's uh, this little sliding portion that, where you have to use your forward momentum to get over there. And here's an intersection. Uh, going right leads to Bowser, but going left, like I'm going to do here, leads to the star. So, I'm going to slide here and land on the platform. Yes! Excellent! Now, I'm going to have to land on this. No! No! God! I was doing so well, too. This And th that upcoming part is really easy when you know what to do. There's a trick to it, though. But still, that really, really sucks. Well, at least this segment isn't too bad because, well... Flamethrowers are ob as obvious as day. Well, unless so you're playing this for the first time and, you, and you're just not looking at the tower and uh, noticing the flamethrowers thro coming out of it, and since there's a regular pattern of one every two segments, that is pretty easy, not challenging at all. So now, this is going to be attempt number two at the hidden star in Bowser's Rainbow Rumble. The hardest part, honestly, is landing on that platform over there. Avoiding the fire is pretty easy. You just have to keep moving around like that. Now, okay, I landed this jump. Now, the trick to landing on these platforms is to simply backflip on them. You don't even need to adjust for distance or anything. You just have to adjust the camera to make sure that uh, the, the, the platform is directly behind you, and after that it's just a simple matter of backflipping. Now, um... Oh my god, I don't, I don't remember where this takes me. I'm just going to take a look real quick. And, uh... Oh crap, there goes the music. Uh, it was uh, the x Not Fortress theme from uh, A Thousand Year Door, by the way, in case you haven't uh, recognized it. Which you probably should have, because I'm assuming most people here have played A Thousand Year Door. So, here we just have this, um little planetoid. It's 
very easy. Those sniffets aren't in jerk positions at all. So here we go! 119 stars! So next time, we will be fighting Bowser for the 120th star and the fate of this here star road.